Every time I post a video about jihad, several Muslims and some non-Muslims send me messages saying, David, why are you judging an entire religion by the actions of a few people? These messages are confusing because nowhere have I ever said, look, some Muslims carried out a terrorist attack, therefore Islam promotes terrorism. Instead, I go through Islam's most trusted sources, showing that Muhammad's teachings promote jihad. So I'm not judging Islam by the actions of a few Muslims, I'm explaining what it teaches. I can only assume that the people who tell me not to judge an entire religion by the actions of a few aren't saying this because they've thought carefully about any points I've made. They're saying it because this is just what they've been trained to say whenever someone criticizes Islam. There's no actual thought involved. It's now an automated response. But since I'm getting bored pointing this out every time I talk about jihad, I decided to make a short video clearly stating my position on judging religions. My official position on judging Islam is this. We don't judge Islam based on the actions of Muslims who slaughter unbelievers in the name of Allah, or rape their female captives, or beat their wives into submission, or murder cartoonists. We don't judge Islam by ISIS, or Al-Qaeda, or the Taliban, or Boko Haram, or Al-Shabaab, or any of the other terrorist groups who want to violently subjugate the entire world to Islam. Instead, we judge Islam based on the teachings and example of Muhammad, a man who... A. Was convinced at one point that he was demon-possessed. B. Tried repeatedly to commit suicide. C. Admittedly delivered revelations from the devil. D. Complained that he was a victim of a magic spell that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. E. Supported his religion by robbing people. F. Started a war with Mecca when he had a chance to live in peace in Medina. G. Had people assassinated for criticizing his religion. H. Beheaded hundreds of Jews for trying to defend themselves once they realized he was eliminating them. I ordered his followers to execute anyone who leaves his religion. J commanded his followers to violently subjugate the entire world. K tortured people for money. L bought, sold, owned, and traded black African slaves. M called Ethiopians raisin heads and claimed that Satan looks like a black man. N had sex with a nine-year-old girl. O had at least nine wives at one time, even though his own revelations only allowed four. P married the wife of his own adopted son after causing the divorce by lusting after her. Q had sex with his slave girls. R broke the promise he made to his wives that he would stop having sex with his slave girls after he got caught with a slave girl in the bed of his wife Hafsa. S allowed his followers to rape their female captives. T took the most beautiful captives back to his own tent. U told his followers they could beat their wives into submission. V declared that women are stupid and that their testimony is unreliable. W promoted idolatrous pagan practices like kissing the black stone and bowing down to the Kaaba. X repeated stories based on forgeries and passed them off as revelations from God. Y portrayed God as deceptive and Jesus as a complete failure. And Z has kept more people from knowing the true God than any other false prophet in history. So if we judge Islam by Muhammad, what can we conclude? Worst religion ever. But we need to be consistent here, which means that we shouldn't judge Christianity based on the actions of Christians who invented hospitals to care for the sick, invented orphanages to care for unwanted children, pioneered the Western education system by starting universities like Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, led the scientific revolution, ended slavery in the West, and so on. We don't judge Christianity by all the Christians who changed the world. We judge Christianity by the teachings and example of Jesus, who... A. Created the universe. B. Sustains the universe in existence. C. Laid aside his glory so that he could enter creation as a human being to suffer for our sake. D. As to his human nature was born of a virgin. E. Fulfilled dozens of Old Testament prophecies. F. Miraculously fed thousands of people on more than one occasion. G. Walked on water. H. Could calm storms by speaking. I healed the sick, J cleansed the lepers, K cast out demons, L raised the dead, M made the lame walk, N gave sight to the blind, O gave hearing to the deaf, P gave hope to the oppressed, Q confronted and rebuked their oppressors, R broke down the barriers that kept people divided by race, 
class, and gender. S ordered his followers to love everyone, including their enemies. T commanded his followers not to use violence in his name. U endured torture and death for our sins. V told the Father to forgive those who crucified him. W rose from the dead. X gives us his righteousness so that we can know God. Y intercedes with the Father on our behalf. And Z will eventually judge the entire world. So, if we judge Christianity by Jesus, what can we conclude? Best message ever. To all the Muslims who sent me messages pointing out that we shouldn't judge Islam by the actions of Muslims, thank you for the comments. I agree with you completely. We don't judge religions by their adherence. We judge religions by their central figures and teachings. But now that we've judged Islam and Christianity by the teachings and example of Muhammad and Jesus, respectively, how's that working out for you?